Hello world, and welcome back to DxO. My name is Don, and in today's video we're going to take a look at using a color checker to create uh, and use a camera profile in DxO Photo Lab 5. Now this video started out uh, on Saturday I was going to do one. Um, in fact, I recorded some for it. Uh, with a little bit more color management talk in it, but realized shortly after I did some of the screen capture that that wasn't going to work very well because the video itself was going to be constraining the uh, color space. And so a lot of the things that I was talking about weren't actually even showing up. Um, but I thought I thought this was still a good a good wee topic to do. Um, I just it's on the back I saw a uh, a comment uh, online about someone saying that they still use Lightroom because they like to be able to create the camera profiles um and I was thinking to myself gee I'm sure that I've used that functionality in the past so let's take a little look at that and I'll also I'll show you the uh the short form of some of the color management stuff just a, something interesting that I found in the Windows version uh of PhotoLab 5 that, that might help with color management if you're having some difficulties. So let's jump in and take a look. All right, so here we are. And uh, so first things first, so I've got this image and it's got obviously a color checker in it. So momentarily um, we'll go through the process to to create the camera profile and apply the camera profile in PhotoLab. Um, but just before I do that, um, I was having some trouble, especially with the videos and, and you know the um, color management, color spaces on the video, and trying to keep things looking for you guys on YouTube, more or less, at least closer to what it's looking like for me. Um, and in amongst this deep dive, I found something quite neat in DxO Photo Lab 5 and the Windows version. Now, and I have confirmed because I do still have uh, access to my um, Mac version. I just am switching over to Windows. I was fortunate enough to um, win uh, a prize of a very beefy gaming PC, which, you know, I do a little bit of gaming, but I'm not much of a gamer, but I thought, heck, you know, that'll actually make a really good um, PC for doing stuff like this. So so I'm kind of swapping over to Windows. And um, so here, yeah, here we go. So in terms of color management, I, I found that if, if I go to the preferences, so edit and preferences in Windows, um, and I come to the display area, there's a really neat little feature in this ICC profile used for display. Um, so right now, current profile of the display device is selected. Um, and the interesting thing that I found when I was playing around is that, so I've got a monitor which I can switch. So it's a, a reasonably high-end monitor. Um, so right now, because it's better for video, I'm actually in RGB, uh, sRGB land. Um, maybe another time I have it in um, my setting for panel native, which is essentially a, a pretty close to Adobe RGB um, with some slight variations. So I might be switching around. Um, and this says to use the current profile of the display device. The thing that I found though, is that it doesn't update. So if I swapped that now, which I won't bother doing, because as I said on Saturday, it's a whole thing. It doesn't overly show up too much. Um, but if I swap that now, the monitor will have a new profile, but the software is still, it doesn't like, it doesn't update. It doesn't know that. So I actually have to close the application down and reopen it. And then when it reopens, it checks again to see what the current profile of the display device is. So I can see that catching people up. So I wanted to mention that. But the other thing that's cool, and if you think that maybe you've got that going on, um, is there's, there's a generic sRGB profile here that you can pop on. Um, I'll, I'll go ahead and click this, click OK. And we don't see too much of a difference, but we did actually see um, some of the some of the dark colors get darker, um, which I think is interesting. And you know, I'll be I'll be checking this out because you know how you put things on the internet, and suddenly anything that's in the darker spaces suddenly looks way darker than it did on your monitor. Um, so I'm thinking this might be a really nice little trick for 
um, checking on how that's going to convert. So anyway, that's I'm just going to go in and, and put it back to where it was. But just to, to bring your attention to that, which I thought was a cool little find. But just remembering that it doesn't update. So if the applications open when you switch profiles, even if it's on this current um, display device, it doesn't update. You need to restart the application. So enough of that. Let's move on to um, let's move on to the color checker. Um, and I just realized my camera. There we go. Um, I'll get that launched in the background just so that it's a bit a little bit faster when the time comes. Um, so here we go. So we've got this image. I've got no great love of using images of myself, but it's one that I had that uh, actually had a color checker in it. And it seemed this is the first one I found that had a color checker. So I thought this will do. I think it was just me playing at the studio one day, trying out some different lighting situations. Um, and this was this was sort of an early one. So um, here I am and I've got that. So the thing that I need if I want to create a camera profile is a DNG. Uh, so I'm just going to go up and I'm going to apply preset. Uh, no correction and just it takes everything away um, I don't know that that's absolutely necessary but it, it feels like the right move to me um, and so I've taken everything away it should be just straight up and I'm going to come down here to export to disk and I'll take off I don't need the JPEG is ticked here but I just want the DNG um, and we've got choices here of um, all corrections applied of course I don't have any um, or denoise and optical corrections applied only of course those are also turned off uh, I'll leave it on on that one um, and uh, I'll just have it go out to its original folder everything else should be all good so I will go ahead and export that just come down here and click this I can watch my progress there we go. It says that it's been exported in two seconds. Awesome. And I'll click on this little uh, magnifying glass to open the finder um, so that it, because uh, I need to essentially, you can't really drag something from Photo Lab to another app. So I, I need the finder to be able to do that. So I've got that here. And this one's highlighted. It says Affinity Designer Files is how it's recognizing that. Um, so let's just pop this down for a second. Bring this up for a second. So it just says drag and drop a DNG image here. And there, you know, you can you can search the internet. There are, um, some people like to do dual illuminant DNGs, etc. I've never really gotten into that. I mostly just uh, I mostly don't mind unless it's something that I want the color to be exactly right for. Um, in, in which case, I'm only really worried about having it right for that instance um so i just i just take a take a shot and do it uh in that case so um yeah so i'm just going to drag that across drop it on loading loading there we go and we can see it's quite intelligent it's automatically found the color checker it's automatically placed all of the patches and um gotten itself all ready to go so that's good so i'll go ahead just and do create profile And um, yeah, I'll just call it, uh, what will I call it? <laughs> Today is one. Um, I, I did this on Saturday as well when I was messing about. Um, and I've deleted those, but just, just in case they're going to hang around and come back to haunt me, I'll give it a different name. Um, so go, and go ahead and do save. And I will I will um, speed this bit up because this takes a good like 40, I don't know, it's hard to tell, isn't it? Like when it's just taking ages and ages, but it seems like 40 or 50 seconds. So. All right, here we go. So it says the profile's been created successfully. Okay, that's great. I click okay. And I'll just minimize that for now. Right then, I will have cut this out, but I'm just going to about to paste it in. Um, I did not change my path, and it went to Camera Raw Profiles for Adobe. Um, so I've just uh, gone gone to that folder, copied it, and and pasted it in rather than recreating it. So uh, here we go. So we've got our uh, DCP file, and I'm just going to pop back over here to um, Photo Lab, and it's just really simple to apply. Go to the color space uh, come down here to 
DCP profile. Um, and it is trying to find one that I made previously. Um, but I'm going to just do import. Click on today's. Nice. And let's just see what kind of a difference that makes. Quite a difference to color, doesn't it? If I pop in here, um, so it's currently on. And if you look at like this blue and this orange and this brown here, turn it off for a second. So it's quite a, especially in the blue and the orange, quite a shift. I noticed this blue doing quite a shift as well over here. So there we go. There we have it. Um, so that's it. And then it's just a matter of, you know, if you've got another image over here that you want to uh, apply that to, just again, same thing, DCP file, and it's got today's. And you know, adjust as adjust as needed. I feel like that maybe that one's a bit darker. I think I was standing a bit more forward um, in the other one, but you get you get the idea. Kind of gives you a, a wee bit of a, a before and after. So that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching, um, and let me know in the comments if you ever use Color Checker to create profiles. You know how, how that goes for you. If there are any sort of tips uh, or you know, any ideas that you'd like to share with everyone else. Cheers. See you again.